A major feature in iMatch for editing and viewing metadata is the metadata panel here on the right side. When I click on an image, the metadata panel shows me the metadata contained in the image file. In this default layout, we see the rating, label and attributes assigned to the file, some camera information, title, author, description, GPS data and other metadata that may be contained in the image. When you take a photo, your camera records information about camera settings and shooting conditions in a so-called EXIF record that is stored inside the image file. iMatch imports this EXIF record and displays a subset of that information as part of the default metadata panel layout in a section called Camera Data. This includes information like shutter speed, aperture, ISO value or which lens was used to take the photo. To see all information contained in the EXIF record created by your camera, you can switch the metadata panel to the image layout, which displays the histogram, the camera information, and all the EXIF uh, data extracted from the image file. This can be a lot depending on which camera model you use. Okay, let's edit some metadata. For this, I switch the metadata panel to the describe layout which has been designed to quickly add titles, descriptions and other metadata values to files. To add the title and a description to this image, I just click into the title column in the metadata panel and then start typing. As you can see, the metadata panel indicates the values I have just changed with a little pen icon. This pen icon serves as a local undo. I can undo a change done to a specific metadata tag, like in this case the headline, by just clicking on the pen. This reverts to the original value, in this case an empty tag. And I can just enter a new value now. When I make changes in the metadata panel, the toolbar activates two buttons. The green arrow button allows me to apply these changes to the image file and the red X button allows me to undo all changes or to cancel the editing operation. In this case I click the green arrow button to apply the changes done in the metadata panel to the image. After I have applied my changes in the metadata panel a little pen icon shows up in the image. This tells me that this file has unwritten or pending metadata changes. By default, iMatch updates the database with the changes you did in the metadata panel, but does not immediately write back these changes to the image file on disk. To see which data was changed, you point the mouse cursor at the pen icon, and iMatch lists the modified text in this overlay window. To write back the changes to the image on disk, click the pen. Now the data has been written to the image on disk, the pen has vanished, and the data has been safely recorded inside the image and is available for all XMP aware applications like Photoshop, Lightroom or whatever uh, image editor or raw processing software you use. The metadata panel is capable of editing metadata for any number of files. For example, if I select these two files and enter a title, and then press Ctrl S or click the green arrow button, the metadata for both files is updated. Both files show the pen indicator and tell me that the title has been modified. I can now add individual descriptions to these images by just selecting the image I want to update. When you click from one image to the next, the changes to the last image are automatically saved or committed in this case. You don't need to press the arrow button. Just click on the next image. Some fruit. Now I have modified these three images and I'll show the pen icon to tell me that data has been modified in the database but not yet written to the image on disk. To write back the changed metadata into the files on disk, I can just select these files and then click on the pen icon or I use the command metadata write back for selected files from the commands menu. To check for and write back all files with pending metadata, 
you can use the command metadata write back for all pending files. IMAGE here shows you how many files have to be written back and allows you to write them all back in one go. As usual, all details about the metadata panel are explained in the IMAGE help system. Just click somewhere in the metadata panel and then press F1 to open the corresponding help topic. This help topic explains all the features of the metadata panel in great detail. If you prefer, you can also use a keyboard-only workflow when editing metadata. This avoids moving the hand always between the mouse and the keyboard and can be a big time saver. To start editing, click on a file and then press Ctrl E, M on the keyboard. The metadata panel opens or uh, is brought into foreground and automatically starts editing the first field. You can now move between fields using the tab key or shift tab to move in the other direction. Just start typing to change the values. While working in the metadata panel, you can use the keyboard shortcuts control page up and control page down to navigate between the files in the active file window. To start editing the file, just press the tab key on the keyboard. This way you can navigate and edit metadata without ever using the mouse. If you select multiple files, the metadata panel may show the string multiple values. This means that these two files have a different title. The first file has no title at all and the second file has the title Laura in the studio. If I now select both files, the metadata panel cannot show both values at the same time and hence it shows multiple values. To set all files to the value of the focused file, the one with the yellow border, I just click on the pen and then save my changes. This applies the title of the focused file to all other selected files. A very easy way to set the same content to any number of files or to correct spelling or typos. Image includes an integrated spell checker. This allows you to check spelling as you type in the metadata panel, the keywords panel, the attributes panel and elsewhere. Let's see how this works. This word is unknown to the spell checker and it indicates it with a red underline. I can now correct the word. Or using right click I can select from a list of suggested words. To configure the spell checker, follow the instructions in the IMAGE help. Just search for spell in the help index. Well, this was the first part of our uh, two-part metadata panel tutorial. In the next video, we'll look into how to use the Tesserus to save typing uh, and use controlled vocabularies for the metadata panel and the keyboard panel.